This video is brought to you by GPU Audio. How did I get here? Hi everybody, Adam Steele here. Today we're going to be talking about impulse responses or IRs. It's something that I've talked about quite a lot in the past. It's something I'm quite well known for, but today we're going to be talking about a competition for GPU audio. and I'm gonna run you through how to make impulse responses in a couple of different ways, and then how to get creative and mess around. So like I said, this is a video for GPU Audio. They're a company that are making a software where you can load like plugins onto a graphics card instead of a CPU. It's really clever technology. It's definitely in its infancy, but they wanted me to talk about their products, which I'm really excited about because offloading stuff, especially with like near zero latency was the idea to something that you probably already own kind of a big deal, but we'll talk about that another time. So an impulse response is something that's usually used in one of two ways. Either it's something that's used to capture like a reverb, like the sound of a room, or it's used to capture something like the sound of a guitar cabinet. It's the same thing with a different kind of end for the same means. The more traditional one capturing like a reverb of a room is where we get the term impulse response where you get something like a big clap or a bang, an explosion, sometimes a starter pistol or a clapper or something. That's a big spike of noise and that's an impulse. And what comes after it, especially if you're in like a big echoey room, that that's the response. And so by recording that whole thing as you go, you can then use some very clever software to then reverse engineer that and use that so that any sound you then make using a recording system, you can then feed through that to get a very similar response for your sound. So like if I do that big clap in St. Paul's Cathedral and got that big kind of sound, then I could then run something like a completely dry guitar part through that impulse response using what's called a convolution software, which is the, the posh name for an IR loader. And that should then sound like it's in St. Paul's Cathedral. Now there are loads of different variables in this. The idea for the original kind of impulse response was to have like the perfect impulse. So whether that is a clapper or a starter or whatever, and the perfect, like the microphones that have no you know, no characteristics, really clean measurement mics, all that kind of thing. The idea being trying to get something as close to just the pure sound of that reverb that you can get. But people started tinkering with it. <laughs> and uh, somebody, I don't know who, found out that if you use a different microphone, it kind of embeds the sound of the microphone in there, which can be quite nice. So maybe if you're recording a stereo room sound, you might want to use some nice condensers like your know, Neumann U87s or nice ribbons like Coles 4038s. Whatever you want to use, that will become a part of that sound because the response isn't just the sound of that room. It's also the sound of any equipment that's involved in that process. There are two ways of doing it. There's an impulse, like I said, with a big click or there's what's called the sine wave sweep method. The sine wave sweep method is a really clever mathematical method where you put one of those kind of things through. And the idea is that when you do even more crazy maths with that, you get a cleaner result with less background noise, so a more accurate signal. That's also useful when trying to capture something like a guitar cabinet, because what we're doing with a guitar cabinet, if you put that response through, that's gone so quickly that a lot of the detail of how a guitar cabinet responds, how it resonates, all that kind of stuff might not get captured. So by doing that sine wave sweep thing with that really long kind of thing, you then take that original sine wave sweep and you take your recording that you've made and you do this thing called deconvolution that does this kind of 
clever maths and you end up with a result that is as if you'd put an impulse response clap type thing through it and ended up with that perfect result. At some point, somebody said, well, if we're doing the sine wave sweep thing, the idea is to use the perfect speaker to get that perfect full sine wave. What if we screw with that and change the perfect speaker for like a guitar speaker? Then you get the sound of that guitar speaker. If you choose a nice microphone, you get the sound of that microphone. If you change where the microphone is, you get the sound of that speaker plus where that microphone is, plus the sound of the microphone. If you add any external kind of outboard gear in there, you get the sound of that too. If you change your perfect clean power amp to be something like a guitar amp or a, you know, some weird old distorted radio or whatever it is you've got, then you start to get into really unusual creative IR capture. Now, when it comes to the whole guitar amp capturing IR thing, that's gone from a bit of a weird kind of art to almost a science these days because, you know, enough of us have done the guitar capture to work out that like a good clean solid state power amp helps in that circumstance if we want to just get the sound of the cab. Um, you know, making sure you don't overload the cabinet, making sure you use good preamps and microphones and positions and all that kind of stuff. And then the deconvolution thing, that is almost a formula now. And it's something that I do a lot for loads of different companies. And so I've kind of become well known on the subject. I've been doing IR captures since about 2004 when I was messing around capturing reverbs and then trying the guitar cab thing with not a huge amount of success at the time, honestly, but that was because it was real early days. That's almost 20 years ago now. But the competition, from GPU Audio is about creative and unusual IRs. So what are you guys gonna mess with? If you get a sine wave sweep, I usually use Voxengo's Deconvolver software for that. Um, you could probably mess around with that, maybe change the volume of different parts of it to get different sounds. You can use different microphones. I've got this soup can microphone, which is literally a piezo strapped to the inside of a soup can sounds super weird. If I was to put that in front of a guitar cabinet, that would be really kind of radio effecty and boxy. But I'm gonna go one further here. I'm gonna plug this in now and I'm gonna make some IRs completely on the spot. All right, here goes some really weird impulse responses. Because if you think about it, an impulse response, if you clap in a room and it goes, I'm gonna make some pretend rooms with my mouth. So let's go into the software now and we'll export those. I'll trim them down so that exactly when the uh, mouth noise starts, that's when the impulse starts and I'll turn them into reverbs. Okay, so I did those weird noises that you saw and they're all here in Reaper. So I have trimmed them. I used tab to transient to get to the nearest, well, the nearest transient. If I just keep hitting tab, it will skip me over to the next next noise. So I cut those up and I exported those as WAV files uh, because the way that I did that silly noise, I pretended with that poof, that I did the original transient as well and just kind of did that as a, a thing. And so once I exported those, I could just load them into an IR loader. So this is a piece of a bass track that I've got that I'm gonna play through. Just something to use. And this is Reaper's Reverb, which is an IR loader that you can play with. So right now I've got no dry signal, plenty of wet signal, and I've got the uh, first one of 10. I've got the... Uh You can hear if you go, you can hear that that I, I made being used to process it. Whereas if I go to the second one, a shorter one, and cycle through,
I think that's my favourite one. That there's there's a real to it. So I could really do some strange sound design with this stuff. Like that one, if I blend that with the dry signal. Currently, nobody's got that sound in the world but me, because I made that impulse response to apply to that sound. So there's all this awesome stuff. And then in this particular IR loader, I could then do things like trim and uh, stretch this. Stretch is my favorite thing. I'm going to put this at double speed stretch and put a little bit of a pre-silence gap in there, just so that we've got a little bit of a gap between the noise. epic i mean you can time stretch things with or without pitch stretch in your daw before then you know once it's been deconvolved if it was a sine wave sweep you can then manipulate it in digital before it gets used as an ir you can do all sorts of weird stuff so yeah get creative get going with interesting stuff you can make stereo irs that will load in and do things with both sides if your ir loader works in stereo there is so much you can do have fun. So there you go, that was a bit of fun. Now, if you want to really screw around and make some interesting, creative impulse responses, GPU Audio's competition is linked down below, and they are finishing this at the end of February this year. So if you get them in quick, uh, then if you get into the top however many, we'll be doing a stream where we talk about the winners, the top however many, I think it's top 50, might be top 20, and we'll talk about those in depth and try them all out on different sources. That'll be a lot of fun. And then uh, we'll announce a winner. There's a whole prize package, I believe, as well. So thanks everybody for watching and good luck in the competition. Have a lot of fun and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.